Okay, this video is Dr. McDougall on oxalates and kidney stones. So first of all, real quick, here's the anatomy. Here's the kidney. The kidney connects to what's called the ureter. It's a tube that connects the kidney to the urinary bladder. Um, this little arrow indicates a jet of contrast that pops out of the ureter, and you can see it on ultrasound, a type of ultrasound called Doppler ultrasound. Okay, here's just a little more detail from the same drawing. Here's a kidney stone obstructing urine outflow from the left kidney. This is called the renal pelvis. This is called the ureter. So this is the UPJ, ureteral pelvic junction stone. Uh, that's a common spot for big stones. Smaller stones typically will lodge in the region of the ureteral orifice where the ureter joins with the urinary bladder. They often call that the UVJ. That means ureteral vesicle. The bladder is called the vesicle. So ureteral vesicle junction stone. Okay, and then we measure the size of it. Is it likely to pass? If they're, you know, six millimeters or less in diameter, they usually will pass. All right, so now we're going to get into what Dr. McDougall has to say. And the reason I'm bringing this up is people ask me this all the time. <clears throat> and I can tell you, when you want information fast, usually the best thing to do is check out Dr. McDougall's website. This is from Dr. McDougall's website, drmcdougall.com. This is a newsletter that he wrote about kidney stones and oxalates. He'll usually have excellent information. If he's got anything on the topic, and he very often does, that's a good first spot to go. Uh, then I usually would, you know, look at my site look at you know PubMed or something that's where you usually find the best information PubMed's quite variable if it's on McDougal's site it's probably almost always good information if it's on my side it's almost always going to be good information but PubMed <clears throat> is still pretty good but there's a lot of BS you know corporate paid for stuff on PubMed but there's also a lot of good stuff there anyways so here's Dr. McDougal's newsletter and he says more than 90 percent of kidney stones are calcium oxalate people worry about eating green leafy vegetables because they're high in oxalates Okay, but guess what? <clears throat> you don't see hardly any kidney stones in populations that eat starch-based diets and greens. You see tons of kidney stones in populations that eat modern Western diet, standard American diet, and high-fat versions of the Mediterranean diet. Okay, so the proteins, especially animal proteins, because they have more methionine and cysteine, more sulfur-containing amino acids, increase the excretion of calcium into the kidneys because they dissolve the bones. What he's getting at is they cause a low-grade metabolic acidosis, and the pH is buffered in part by taking calcium from the bones. It also takes some calcium from the muscle, but it takes some calcium from the bones, and that causes osteoporosis over time. You pee your bones into the toilet. <clears throat> okay. Then the other question is, well, where do the oxalates come from? So that explains where the calcium comes from. Where the oxalates come from is there's a soap-forming-like reaction in the intestinal tract with fat. Okay, let me explain that. Plants are high in oxalates, but these are typically bound to calcium. And in low-fat plants, they remain insoluble, and you defecate them out of your body. They are lost with the stool. So the oxalates in plants tend to not be absorbed when you're eating low-fat plant-based diet. Okay, now here's the key caveat. However, a soap-forming reaction, saponification occurs with fat or, or other types of grease, whatever, fat and oils in the intestine that breaks up the insoluble calcium oxalate. And this allows the oxalate, and once it's separate from the calcium in the plant, to be available for absorption. From there, the oxalate then is excreted into the kidneys and can combine with calcium to form calcium oxalate stones. So this soap-forming reaction from dietary fat explains why you know high fat eaters of sad diet or you know high fat mediterranean diet get more kidney stone and why you should not fear vegetables okay so that's the key point that's why the meters i can also tell you i've seen many thousands of kidney stones okay i used to put uh, percutaneous nephrostomy tubes in the kidney i was an imaging guided surgeon was my first main medical career job okay i did a fellowship at harvard in imaging guided surgery which included placement of lots and lots of percutaneous nephrostomy tubes pcns into the kidneys uh, to drain hydronephrosis in patients obstructed by kidney stones and by tumors okay i also i also used to put in tons of ureteral stents and you know do the preliminary stuff percutaneous nephrolithotomy all that stuff anyway so here is a kidney and it is more hypoechoic darker in its echo texture okay compared to the, the liver that means this is fatty liver I see this on almost all the kidney stone follow-up patients when we look at their ultrasound. Again, I've seen many thousands of these, okay? The vast majority of them have fatty liver, <laughs> which implies they're eating a high-fat diet, a lot of, of uh, meat, oils, processed food, high fructose corn syrup, all that crap. 
Okay, here is what a high fatty liver looks like on a liver. So now on CAT scan, on ultrasound we go by echogenicity. On CAT scan we go by density. The units of density are HU, Hounsfield units, named after one of the physicists, Sir Geoffrey Hounsfield, who co-invented the um, CT scanner. And you can see the 15 Hounsfield units compared to 40 Hounsfield units for the spleen. The spleen is denser. It's more, on CT, more white means denser. So the liver is hypodense in comparison with the spleen, consistent with fatty liver. And this is typical. This is a typical liver in a uh, kidney stone patient. Okay, here's what a kidney stone looks like on ultrasound. You can see on color Doppler, you get what's called a twinkle artifact that alerts you that there's probably a stone in that location. Uh, I'll show you another kidney stone image here. Okay, here's a kidney stone on the left side, and you can see the stone right here. You know it's a stone because you got posterior uh, acoustic shadowing, this is called. Other things that are hyperchoic, they don't shadow, but the stone shadows, meaning that it blocks the sound beam from passing distal to it because it reflects off the stone. That's why it's hyperchoic, because the, sh the sound beam is reflecting back to the transducer. Transducer's right here, it's got a pie-shaped field of view. And then the fluid accumulating proximal to the stone. The stone's obstructing the UPJ, the ureteral pelvis junction, like I showed in that drawing earlier. And so this is hydronephrosis, mild hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis means obstructive dilatation of the kidney collecting system, okay? So now I'm going to show you the CAT scan equivalent. So here's the CAT scan equivalent of that ultrasound picture. Here's a stone, and the ureter would be right here, the pelvis junction right here, so a UPJ, ureteral pelvic junction stone, and here's the hydronephrosis where the calocele system is dilated behind it. Okay, notice you don't see big calices over here because this is a normal looking kidney. Okay, also notice you have a fatty liver, it's lower in density than the spleen. I see this stuff every day, multiple times every day, okay? I don't every day see, you know, hydronephrosis cases specifically in the UPJ, but I see kidney stones, a bunch of them every day. And I see hydronephrosis due to kidney stones several times a week. So anyways, um, that's it for this talk. I just wanted you to, the key message out of this talk was that the oxalates in your greens, your veggies and stuff, they're not a big deal because they're bound to calcium if you're eating a low-fat plant-based diet and you excrete them in your stool, so it's not a big deal. You, you know, the people who are going for kidney stone follow-up are sad diet eaters and high-fat uh, Mediterranean diet eaters, primarily.